Well, these two sides were third and fourth in the J League last season, and there was very little to separate them in terms of statistics either. As San Frecce fans take a bow at their stunning new stadium, they welcome the legendary Uroa Reds as the 2024 J League gets underway at this fantastic Edion P Swing Hiroshima. Just wait for the players to make their entrances here and you'll see just how stunning this place is. Well, San Frecce were slow starters last season and made a habit of that in recent years. If they are to throw down a real challenge and look for a fourth J-League title, they'll want to hit the ground running this time. It does feel as if the league is wide open this year. And Urawa, so good in cup competitions and less consistent in the league, will certainly believe that they can be contenders as well. 82 days since we brought down the curtain on a 2023 season that belonged to Vissel Kobe. We get the 32nd J-League season underway. It is a new season at a new stadium, and you wonder what drama 2024 might bring. been a long time coming this terrific stadium and they're enjoying every single moment of it will it bring them a title that will be the dream of course it will and as ever both sides wonderfully well supported And so to mark the occasion, we've got a very special opening here. So it's welcome to the Edion Peace Wing Hiroshima. Long may it prosper. Couple of new arrivals for the Urawa Reds in Hiroki Sakai. Mr. Dependable. It's a really lovely way to start the season. Gives it that special sense of occasion. Kikun 
Now it's down to business. I wonder what his season will bring. The great creative influence for this Sanfrecce Hiroshima side. And so we're just about ready after the pomp and circumstance. Strange, of course, for these Uroa players. It's not really their party. They come here and they've got a job to do under their new coach, Per Matthias Hugmer. And he'll want to hit the ground running. Well, the home team have shown a remarkable consistency of selection under Michael Skibber, and they make only three changes from the side that finished last season with a 1-0 win at Avispa Fukuoka. There's a start for the new signing, Yuki Ohashi, who Skibber hopes will be the answer to their goal-scoring prayers. Piero Sotiriu starts, as does Matsuki Kato. Much as ever, though, rests on the shoulders of Makoto Mitsuta entering a third season in the first team as one of the best creative players around, but maybe playing a more withdrawn role at the start of this campaign. Our referee is Futoshi Nakamura. This J-League game, number 151 for him. The VAR, Hiroyuki Kimura, Yasuke Hamamoto assisting. Well, the new Uruwa coach, Per Matthias Hogbo, makes six alterations from their last team of 2023 at a club that has seen more change than San Freche in their pursuit of perfection. There's a start for the new signing, Samuel Gustafsson, the Swede, one of three Scandinavians in the starting lineup under a Norwegian coach. Ola Solbakken is not in the matchday squad, but there are starts for two other new signings in the shape of the Brazilian Thiago Santana and Rioma Watanabe. Santana leads the line centrally, Sakine and Matsuo either side of him. Gustafsson anchors it all together. Both San Frecce and Urua scored 42 goals last season, which isn't really enough to bring you a title. This is the best defence in J-League of the last campaign against the second best. You can expect them to keep it tight, but they both do have creative flair going forward, although they both know that to really challenge for the league, they need a goal-scoring superstar. Can they find one in amongst their new signings? Nervous times for Ohashi. There's Sasaki at the heart of that terrific San Frecce back line. Skibber, such a good organiser. Maybe he's the most important player of all, Mitsuta. New stadium, new start, new season. What will it bring us? Sanfrecce Hiroshima in that famous purple kit. Kick from right to left in this first half. Team that finished third in the last campaign. Up against the team that was a place behind them. The Urawa Reds, four J-League titles between these two. Urawa, the 
kings of the cup competitions, including the Champions League, of which they're the reigning champions. They'd love a bit more focus on the league. They'd love to add to that one J-League title from 06. Here's Mutsuki Kato. Higashi at the far post was the target. Frecce failed to win in their opening three games last season. They look for a bright start here. Mutsuki Kato scored five goals in 13 starts after joining in August from Cerezo Osaka last season. That was a really poor attempted clearance. Yeah, they failed to win in their opening three. Uruwa lost their first two in the last campaign. They both have a habit of starting slow. Consider that San Frecce ended with 18 goals fewer than Vissel Kobe and 21 fewer than the Yokohama Marinos. Makes you realize how far short they were. Same goes for the Urawa Reds. You can just find either two into double figures or one who gets you nigh on 20, you've got a chance. There's the new man in charge, Per Matthias Hugmo. Norwegian most recently did a great job with Hacken. Won 60 of 109 games, brought them their first title. And that's earned him this chance with the Urawa Reds. Not an easy job, they expect a great deal, replacing Matthias Skorza, who had been new last year. Hugmo's coach, both the... Norwegian men's and women's national team won the Olympic gold in 2000 with the Norwegian women. Cleared by Araki. Schultz. Shusaku Nishikawa, formerly of San Frecce, but very much of Urawa. This league appearance, number 336 for the goalkeeper. Now Hiroki Sakai. Touch for Yuki Ohashi, the new arrival from Shonan Belmare. 13 goals for them last season, that's why he's been signed. Running the channel here. There he is with another good touch, Ohashi. A little nervous, a little edgy here. The Visiting Urawa Reds. Challenge into the back of Thiago Santana, a bit too strong. The new arrival from Shimizu scored 12 in that last campaign, so they both signed strikers who got to double figures last season. And I hope they can do at least that. And it breaks open here for them. Terrific save. Yoshio Kozumi with the shot, flicked away by Osako, who immediately berates those in front of him. 
They should have dealt with this. Shifted that nicely onto his left foot, Koizumi. And that's a good stop by Osako. Close enough to him to get that left hand up. Drilled by Gustafsson. That was a free header for Thiago Santana. Watanabe. Koizumi. That's given away again in a really good area for the visiting side. That's another half chance, but dragged wide this time. Yasuke Matsuo. Pressing to win the ball back. It's the way that Matthias Hugmo likes to play. Jose Kante, by the way, the Guinean retired at the end of last season 33 year old uh, it's a big blow for the Urawa Reds a big figure for them here is Mitsuta interesting to see him just a little bit deeper Araki. Now Sasaki. Good response this from the Urawa Reds, it's been uh, a lively opening. Both like to play with high intensity, Skibber is known for that, always has been. Hugma brings that as well, they both bring vast experience. Hugma the little bit older, 64, Skibber his late 50s. There is a real belief around San Frecce that this could be the year. J-League winners in 2012 and 13 and 15. Third in each of the last two seasons. See what they're trying to do here. Is Nakano. Shiotani.
towards Piero Sotiriu, and it's only half cleared. Kawamura. And that's uh, a bit wild and woolly, and you can see the Uruwa fans enjoying that behind the goal. Makoto Mitsuta with a big smile. Four goals last season, got nine in his first J-League season in 2022. Real live wire. Shows great maturity, I think, in the ability to take up different positions. Santana is quite a unit there, and I think Araki felt the full force. In fact, he was fouling him, wasn't he? Dragged him over and brought him down with him. That is not a soft landing. Here's Sasaki. Sasaki, long striding centre half, sets them forward. That was a shot that nearly turned into something else. And Koizumi, Gustafsson. Mitsuta. Now Hiroki Sakai. Inside for Higashi. Great movement here. This is Kato trying to pick out the cross. Just wasn't quite there. Real quality on view here. Matsuo now for the Uruwa Reds in white and black today. Gustafsson, good solid signing. Formerly of Hecken himself and Torino, Verona, Cremonese. Hudmo identifying him as the player who could just hold everything together in that midfield. Swedish international, a current Swedish international as well. 29, no uh, sense of him coming here to see out his career or anything like that. Zaraki. Now Higashi. That's exactly the job that Gustafsson needs to do.
Mitsuta. Just beyond Nakano there. Alexander Schultz just under a little bit of pressure there. The uh, the Dane. Touched on by Thiago Santana. Well, the arm was raised in the challenge there. Referee went to his pocket. It's not as bad as it looked. From Ohashi. Use it for leverage, really. There's Gustafsson. Shiatani. Dipping volley here, but didn't quite dip enough. It sat up for him, didn't it? See Sotiriu, who scored four times last season. He's one of those working centre-forwards, really. I don't think he's ever going to be uh, prolific. Maybe at a lower level. He scored 21 for Apoel uh, seven seasons ago, but... Well, to get to double figures in this campaign, there's another accusation of a, a stray arm there. Again, backing in with the arm raised. You have to be careful these days. Suki Ito. Hui Braten. Crunched into the ankle there. Mitsuta, the player, is down. Doesn't feel like there's a great deal of love lost here. Let's have another look at that. That's a kick. Watanabe. New arrival from FC Tokyo. We've got another day, that's a yellow card. Here's Kato. Higashi. Then Mitsuta spreads the play. Suter needs to be playing that little bit further forward to really influence the game. Now then, this could be an opening. Higashi and nodded behind. Schultz backpedalling and did well. Just 
stretching to nod it behind there. Mitsuta then to take the corner. Looks for depth and gets a bit too much depth on that. Took San Frecce 169 minutes to score their first goal of the season uh, in that last campaign. Clock's ticking. Here's Kawamura. Now Sho Sasaki. Higashi. Behind for a set for a corner. Sasaki. Here's Higashi. Forward by Kato and straight at Nishikawa. Matsuo. Oh, rolled across brilliantly, and that's a fine save. It really is because Sakine makes a good run, gets a great touch on this. But Asako was equal to that. It's all about the positioning of the goalkeeper. I don't know if he knows that much about the save, but he was in the right position, and then it's a wayward back pass from Takumu Kawamura. Nice communication between him and his goalkeeper, though, just a raise of the hand, no, no problem, just acknowledgement of a, a small error, and they move on. Gustafsson. Delivery's been pretty good so far. Oh, touched on again, they look for these angles. Schultz made the run to the near post. Seven goals last season, all of them from the penalty spot.
Here is Schultz. Higashi. Now Ohashi. Schultz stretching to clear. from Higashi, it bounces around, they still can't get it clear. Appeals for a hand there, referee says the hand was by the side, they will take a look at this. We can do before they do, let's have a look. Nothing wrong there. No, hand is tucked in. No danger of a penalty. Had it struck Sakine. His arm was out by his side, but it's hit Schultz, whose hand was down. And that's a good spot from the referee for me, anyway. Well, they are having a conversation. They want to make sure here. For me, he's bringing his hand down by his side. He's moving it into the right position, isn't he? Yeah, it's the right call. But they were right to have a look. to defend the second ball here and they don't do effectively at all just able to smuggle it clear and then a stray arm from Sasaki and referee goes to his pocket here that's a really poor challenge let's have a look at this again yes no attempt to play the ball and he breaks up the counter-attack must admit I thought the arm was a bit Higher than that, it's not Iraqi, it's Sasaki. More cynical than dangerous. I thought initially that arm was raised higher. Well, so far for Skibber, same old problem. And at the other end, that's a really good save. I know it doesn't look like it, but that's about getting into the right position and narrowing the angle and then almost letting your body do the rest. Here's Sakai. Plenty of arms flailing, aren't there? Referee uh, motioning again to just be careful what you do with your arms, with your elbows.
No way through for Matsuo. So far, these are two really well-organised, well-coached sides, cancelling each other out. moment it's high class but it's not necessarily high drama great occasion though I think Uroa will be the happier first game in the J League under their new coach and seem to have settled pretty well going to make themselves very hard to beat and they've had an attacking threat too Best clearance that by Nishikawa. Sanfrecce looking to seize on that. The new signing Ohashi well wide. Needs to work on that, doesn't he? Nishikawa, that was poor. Just took his eye off it. Love to make an instant impact, Yuki Ohashi. Only six players with more J-League goals than him last season. wide for Shunki Higashi and it's half a chance again for Ohashi but the good thing is for Skibber that Ohashi who isn't playing remember as a central striker is getting into these positions starting to find those spaces it's well wide in the end but from that range no shame in that Pretty much the same squad. San Frecce. Lost Nassim Ben Khalifa is a useful substitute, really. Ohashi, the big arrival. Good little five minute spell this for the home side. Now Mitsuta winding it up from range. Ten minutes to go here until half time. Take that throw quickly. They've shown that when they can get into the final third, they can be a real threat or a while. They just haven't done it enough. I suspect the plan is to sit tight and wait for their moment in the second half, or when it arrives.
touch late by Sasaki who's on a yellow card remember the captain I think he needs to be a bit more careful than that Schultz Hiroki Sakai. Oh, it was well worked until the last bit. See the sort of picture they're trying to paint here. One touch. Fast moving, good running off the ball. Sotirio wasn't able to bring it down. The sense of stalemate on this grand occasion continues. There's Mitsuta. Again, Soteria with his back to goal, not really able to control. Great sense of what they might achieve in this campaign, but the old problem has resurfaced here, short of creativity, short of goals. Here is the main man in that regard in terms of the creative bit, Mitsuta, to take the corner. Up went Satiriu. Shiatani. Gustafsson.
with Mitsuta again. Look how deep he's playing. Way by Osako. You look at options, you look at how they could change it. Douglas Vieira is on the bench for San Frenche. It's the obvious one in terms of a change. It's not really where the problems have been, though. It's been a little deeper lying than that. Nakajima on the bench for Uroa. Another player who could certainly come on and influence things. Gustafsson. Here goes Matsuo. Final minutes of this first half. Very, very tight between Sanfrecce Hiroshima and the Urawa Reds. First game in this Eddie on Peace Swing Stadium, and still we wait for the first goal here. Sho Sasaki. Iraqi. Kawamura. Who let's fly now, and it's spilled by the goalkeeper and in on debut. Ohashi. He's the one whose name will be in the history books. The first goal at this wonderful stadium, a goal on debut for the man they brought in to score the goals. Welcome to Yuki Ohashi. It's all about the goalkeeper, has to do better, but it's a great finish. Pushed out by Nishikawa, but there's still a lot of work to do. And he goes high, and it's absolutely the right thing to do. What a start for him. What a moment for them. what they've been lacking. An extra minute at the end of uh, the added time in this first half. There's Hiroki Sakai. Just left a little bit on the challenge there. They're not happy at all with that. Sakai suggesting there's some play acting going on by Higashi. I think it's the trailing boot, the left boot that catches him. 
Well done to the referee for not reacting to the reaction, because it's not a yellow card. It's a class act, Sakai. for five years at Marseille and previous five at Hanover, 96 in Germany. Fourth year now with the Urawa Reds. He's uh, liked and even loved wherever he went in Europe, that's for sure. Marseille fans still remember him fondly. Sasaki with the throw. Now Kato. Here's Hiroki Sakai. for them to add another though. Sanfrecce forcing their way forward and I think Nishikawa got a touch here. Yeah, he did. Good, strong right hand. It's a save he should make. But it was a really good hit. There is time to take the corner. Junki Higashi with it. Great delivery, headed wide, and that should do it for this first half. And the home fans have what they wanted. It took a while, but it was Yuki Ohashi. Moments into added time at the end of this first half, who gave Sanfrecci Hiroshima the lead. Matsuo went close at the other end, but Asako made a really good save, and then a good stop from Nishikawa, who was at fault for the goal, to turn behind that shot right on the stroke of half-time, or else it would have been two. But the first game at this Edeon Peace Swing Stadium is going the way at the moment of the home side. Very, very tight. Urawa will need to find a response in the second half. There's the man of the moment, Yuki Ohashi with a goal on debut. So Skibber, the happier of the two coaches, it's Hugbo who needs to find a response. And at half-time here at the Eddie on Peace Wing, it's Sanfrecci Hiroshima 1, Urawa Reds 0.
自分が何か求めていくと、誰かに求められたことを達成したいという、そういうタイプなので。ここでサンフレッチ広島よりお知らせです次回のホームゲームは2024メジャースター J1 リーグ第3節3月9日土曜日午後3時キックオフ対戦相手にサガントスを迎えますエディオンピースイング広島公式戦2試合目ぜひお越しくださいご来場の方だけに当たるスタジアム抽選会の
And welcome back to the Eddie Orme Peace Wing Stadium. Sanfrecce Hiroshima leading by a goal to nil. Scored by Yuki Ohashi right at the end of the half. Great moment for him on debut. Very nearly added a second moments after that. Momentum was certainly with them going into half time. Uruwa created one opportunity. Matsuo's touch really well saved by Asako. But all the headlines beforehand as well as about the new stadium were about Ohashi and he has delivered so far. So it's for Matthias Hugmer's team that will have to respond here. The Urawa Reds, let's see if they can. Satiri has really become sort of hard-working centre forward, trying to create space for others. Got a good goal-scoring record for for Cyprus. And there's uh, the new man Thiago Santana for the Urawa Reds. Hasn't really managed to get himself into the game. Sanfrecce to get us back underway, leading by a goal to nil at half time. Schultz just lost their discipline at the end of that first half. The Urawa Reds. Sliding in is Sotiriu. Changes at half time for either side. Hashi played just in behind the striker, the player who's got the goal. It's an awkward turn on the ankle there for Thiago Santana. Was it the landing here? Yeah, it was difficult when you're a big man like that. You do twist, there's plenty of weight for that ankle to carry. Show Sasaki and he needs to be careful. Left sided centre half for San Frecce. On that yellow card, he made one silly challenge since. I reckon he's on his final warning, the captain. Here's Kawamura. Gustafsson. Boy Bratton. Need to be a bit careful here in possession because San Frecce, as they do under Skibber, a pressing high. Playing a 
dangerous game, the Urawa Reds. Finally, they give up possession, but they have it back. Watanabe. Falls for Satiriu. Santana just lost his balance there. Came off the referee, but quite correctly plays the advantage. There was nothing gained from that touch. Six weeks it took them to get their first win in 2022. It was week four last season. Are they going to win their opening game here in this new stadium? Sanfrecci Hiroshima. Really want to be title challengers this season, both of these sides do. Gustafsson. Now Hoy Bratton. Schultz. Oh, swept across towards Gustafsson. Good sharp save. He didn't quite catch it as he might have done. And then allowed Asako to get down. Well, this is better from the Urawa Reds. moment now then down he goes and the referee points to the spot he's having some day here Ohashi and now there's an argument about who takes the penalty should have been sorted out beforehand here it is it's a clumsy touch and then an awful challenge, it's a yellow card as well, but it's a clear foul, look at this. Just lost his bearings completely there, Koizumi, and he knew it straight away. I must admit, I hate this. The argument between them about who's going to take the penalty should never happen. Well, they're checking this. Not quite sure why. I suppose they check everything, don't they? But it's a clear penalty. Satiri is going to take it, having won that argument. He 
made it very clear that he wanted to take it. Let's see if he scores. Chance for clear daylight. It is Piero Sotiriou. And having demanded that he take it, I'm afraid he's made a fool of himself. It's an awful penalty. And it may yet weigh very, very heavy on them. Big day in their new stadium. Ohashi was clearly going to take it. I would have thought that was the plan. And Sotiriu bullied him out of it. And shouldn't take another. Great header, though! And guess who? Guess who? Ohashi again! What a debut, he's on a hat-trick. I think San Frecce have got a new superstar. The missed penalty, forgotten. Ohashi comes up with a second goal, and now they do have clear daylight. It's a fabulous head of this. Great run, and it's a super finish. Huge credit to Kato for the delivery as well, but you can't place a header much better than that. It's looking a good signing. You want your team to win, but how must Sotiriou be feeling now? Nothing to say about Ohashi today, he's playing one of the two really in behind Sotirio, he can play centre forward as well. Don't be surprised if he takes over. at the moment, being dominated here. And she is in the mood for a hat-trick and very nearly gets there, and then the follow-up from Sotiriou is blocked. Just found that little bit of space. Nishikawa got in the way. And Sotiriou wasn't able to finish, but they have a corner. behind the goal just a conversation here whether they felt there was a hand in there it was a bit of a mess so they want to have a look no, it's fine so Mitsuta's corner Shuto Nakano. At the moment it looks like being the perfect start. Still 
little time, plenty of time for it all to go wrong, of course. was blocked there. And he has the throw. In fact, I think he's been overruled. And, uh, he's given the free kick the other way, yeah. Everything right. Looking for that little feather of a touch. Flipped around the corner by Sakine. Now Mitsuta. Two goals here from Yuki Ohashi. Giving the home side the advantage, their first game in their new stadium. Well, that doesn't really tell the story. They won a penalty. It was missed. And then... Uh, after he pushed Ohashi out the way, Sotiryu missed the penalty. Then Ohashi, moments later, scored his second goal anyway. Hogma needing a translator here is trying to get the message across he wants I think maybe to make a change and certainly to shift the system around never easy was his first experience doing this Shiatani Zumi. Ball was still rolling. Trying to take that too quickly. Yoshio Kuzumi scored an own goal on match day one last season against FC Tokyo. And scored an own goal against Al Ahly in that uh, Club World Cup. There's the captain, Sasaki. Gustafsson to take the free kick. Spun out of that challenge, Mitsuta. to take this free kick. 
Oh, floated in towards the far post where Koizumi arrived. Found himself in a bit of space, but a very tight angle. Double change is imminent, and I think a system change as well. Anyhow is definitely coming on. I'm not surprised at all to see that. Good calming influence in the centre of midfield. towards Ohashi, it was his cross headed in for the second goal. Here comes the Urua counter with Koizumi, Sakine. Oh, it falls for Sakine! It's a great defensive block, but Urua still had players over. They've got a corner, it might have been more. Block, isn't it? Really brave by Sasaki. Still down. and well, they're having a look at this in case that's deemed to be a foul I wonder if a rib's gone there he's in quite a lot of pain yeah it's not a foul that would have been an eccentric decision that one Two players coming on for Ito and Sakine. As I say, the wow, play in the centre of that midfield to try and link everything together. Maeda, the new signing from Grampus 8. He make an impact on debut just like Ohashi has at the other end. in front of their own fans here. A good game, Kato, it was his header away. Now then, here they come on the counter. Ohashi rolls it for Sutiriu. He's not having a good day. You just know as well, if Ohashi hadn't passed to him, he would have been up in arms. A costly miss that one, and Urua are starting to take risks and are starting to threaten. They won that Champions League in 2023, they sacrificed the league a little bit, ended up slipping to fourth and missing out on 
Champions League next season. There's that really poor attempted finish from Pieros Sotiriou, the Cypriot. Now Gustafsson, a couple of attempts to hack him down and the second one succeeded. Yeah, Sotiri is going to get a yellow card there, quite rightly too, this bad day continues. things you can do on a football pitch is demand to take a penalty take it off the other player and then not just not score but miss here's Matsuo He's had a good game. Gustafsson shows Sasaki to clear it away. out there I think on the opening day it's the opening game of course and a full weekend of action to follow and eventually committing the foul. Douglas Vieira, 36-year-old, to come on now for Piero Sotiriou. His nightmare opening day is over. He'll certainly have better. 36-year-old then, eight goals last season. Fifth year at the club now. Former Tokyo Birdie player is going to be a good squad player, I think. Mitsuta. Here's Ohashi. Players flooding into the middle now, and it reaches the far post. And that's a chance for Nakano, who made a really good run, and it's a really good climb as well. 
Most of that little nick that just took it away from Nakano. He's had to adjust his jump. Koto Mitsuto with the corner. And she took it down, it falls nicely for Hayato Araki. Doesn't mark his 157th Centrecce appearance with a goal, scored once last season, the centre-half. It's a good opening there. Safe hands, though, from Asako under pressure. Douglas Vieira as we move to the final 15 minutes here. Job still not done. Matsu had made a good run there, but Thiago Santana couldn't pick him out. Kozumi was clever. Two more changes to come in the background. As you can see, Shinzo Kuroki, the veteran, is going to be introduced. Ayumu Ohata as well, 22-year-old. Hiroki making his 297th appearance for Uruwa. 113 goals in all. Ohata yet to score a senior goal. the last 10 minutes plus interesting here the Uruwa Reds they've certainly threatened enough to suggest they might Sasaki with a good climb The veteran Kuroki just on. What an impact he would have made here. Saw it all the way, he's got to score. Almost tries to put too much on that. And who'd be a coach at moments like that? He makes the change, it works. But the striker lets him down. His last J-League goal was last June. just waning a touch at the age of 37. Here's Gustafsson.
goals here from Yuki Ohashi, either side of a missed penalty by Piero Sotiriu. San Frecci in a position now from which they should win the game, but huge chance missed by Shinzo Kuroki at the other end just moments ago. Suits up. Nicely off his line there, Keisuke Osako, good goalkeeping. Another good delivery, and it's another headed chance. Well, that looks painful. Hiroki Sakai arriving. Just as he fell, he was clipped, wasn't he? Nasty way to fall. Change for the home side. Taishi Matsumoto on for Mutsuki Kato. Matsumoto been away on loan a couple of times in his seven years at the club. Hopes for a good run in the first team now. took over the number 10 shirt from David Milberg Carlson gets his first full season to try and influence things it's Gustafsson something to cheer they're still very much in this and they're still threatening and they might wish they'd done this earlier in the game they've shown they can cause real problems they should have pulled at least one goal back Chance. 
But will it be that miss from Karoki that will weigh rather heavily on them? Douglas Vieira. seal it here for the home side but miss hit shot from Kawamura Taken advantage, better finishing, and Urua will still be in this. Tokyo Verdi next for the Urua Reds and then away against Konsa and Shonan for a home game against Avispa for San Frenche. They go to FC Tokyo next at home against Sagan. And an away game against the champions Vissel. That will be quite an occasion. Especially if San Frenche can get on a roll here. Tani. Now Mitsuta runners all around him to apply the finish. And then the follow-up. High in the air. Look at Ohashi on a hat trick. Chance for Douglas Vieira. Good one-handed save, and then, dear me, the follow-up's a terrible miscue. Still, Verua are threatening. Here's how much time is to be added, but you never know. Gustafsson. Gashi. Here's 
is Ohata. striking the stroke of half time and then again just after that miss penalty from Sutiria with a wonderful header those are the match winning moments unless we have a very very dramatic stoppage time period and the stretch is out Yamasaki's going to come on here. Six added minutes. There is still time, technically. I think that might stretch beyond the six. by Taichi Yamasaki. Second year in the first team for him came as a university graduate, rather like Mitsuta. Be the way in, uh, in the J-League, the players get an education first and then start their career rather older than uh, players, say, in Europe. Certainly in South America. Now there's a little bit of space opening up. It's Suter, I think, playing where he wants to play, that touch further forward. Just got away from him. Still Uruwa chase for their opening goal of the campaign, even if it is just a consolation. What a moment it was, that missed chance for Karoki, that free header. A moment of real regret for, for Matthias Hogma, who would have loved to start with a, a win here. It was plenty will encourage him, certainly. He's managed his way through the game pretty well, Sasaki having been booked early and in that kick in the chest in the second half as well. Kano 
able to take the throw. Zanisaki. Good service in again. Really well defended. Once more, it was Karoki, the threat. Another well-placed cross and turned just wide. They keep pushing right to the end here. to take this corner teased into the near post off the crossbar and away they've done everything but score here the Uroa Reds and they've played well enough to suggest that their time will come this season but it's going to be Sanfrecci Hiroshima's day look at this though you can't come much closer there were three of them there waiting, and it bounced beyond them all. Seventh minute of added time. Mitsuta steps away and it's whipped wide at the near post. Started slowly the last couple of seasons. They're going to start with a win here, Sanfrecce Hiroshima. Really good win that. Two goals from their new star, Yuki Ohashi on debut. Sign from Shonan Belmari. I'm sure we'll hear from him in a few moments' time as well. He's normally the most significant player who's interviewed. And he is most certainly the most significant player for Schultz and Co. Well, disappointing, but I thought Urua played pretty well in that second half. And on another day, they would have drawn level. But it's Mitsuta and this San Frenche side who come away with a win. For once, Skibber's side starts strong. He'll be absolutely delighted with that. Can they build on it? I think Ohashi's going to take the next penalty as well because he was the. Goal scoring start, gave them the lead on the stroke of half time. Then uh, they won a penalty, Satiru missed it, having uh, snatched it off Ohashi, but then moments later Ohashi made it too and really had the dream debut. And it finished here, so Frecce Hiroshima 2, Uruwa Reds now. see the, uh, the handshakes afterwards it'll just be a case of hearing I presume from Yuki Ohashi I can't believe it's going to be anyone else and we'll give them time to celebrate before he's pulled in front of a camera as I said challenges to come for them next a trip to Tokyo to play FC Tokyo then a home game here against Sagan Tosu 
and then a trip to Vissel. There is the man of the moment, though. Yuki Ohashi, 13 goals last season. But Shonan is what got him the move. He's already two on the way to that total. His coach will be absolutely thrilled with him. Those travelling fans deserved a bit better, but that said, I think if Urua had got going a bit earlier, they may well have troubled San Francisco. They certainly should have scored. Hit the crossbar, great chance missed by Kuroki. I think both of these sides are going to be up there in the top five and challenging. And for Urua next, that home game against Tokyo Verdi before two uh, trips to Konsa and to Shonan. And then uh, a home game against Avispa. It's uh, potentially a start can really find some form after this difficult opening game. He's going to have to be a doubt for next week, isn't he, Sasaki? They'll uh, x-ray those ribs and see if there's more damage than just bruising. There's the San Frecce huddle, they hope. A result to build on, and they hope that this great new stadium can witness a J-League triumph. There's the motivational speech in German, translated, and here is Yuki Ohashi. Yuki公式戦のサンフレッチェ広島今日デビュー戦決定力を見せつけてくれたと思いますが、ご自身のパフォーマンスはいかがでしたか。ま、2点取ることはできてチームを勝利にチームの勝利に貢献できたのは本当に嬉